All right, right on, right on. Welcome to Taylor Ham Tuesday. I hope you guys are doing great. And as you saw right there, I just did a uh, variation on the classic New Jersey Taylor Ham egg and cheese. I threw in a layer of hash browns there, and uh, this sandwich is just looking dynamite there. All right, well, I got a few things here that I wanna share with you guys today. And uh, one of them is right here. This is a Walker Turner drill press here. This is the driver line 700 series. This is from 1937. And this is a drill press that belonged to my grandfather and my father. And uh, this is just an amazing drill press here. A uh, real stout, sturdy drill press. And uh, a while back, the pulley up here broke and shattered and uh, kind of put this out of service. I kind of did a repair on it, but it was never quite right. And I found a pulley on eBay there, uh, an original pulley from a 1937 700 series drill press there. So I ordered that up and that just came in the mail right here. And uh, I'm gonna install that. But before I do, I'm gonna clean this all up. It's kind of been sitting in the dust there and in the mothballs for a few years. And it's got some rust on it and that type of thing. And I'm gonna clean it up, tune it up. I'm not gonna repaint it, do a whole restore. I kinda like uh, some of the old features here, uh, the wear and tear and use from my grandfather and my dad and myself and our family. And uh, so I'm just gonna clean it up, clamp the rust and get this thing in nice working order there. And uh, I wanna show you a little of the history too. I have an original catalog here from 1937, uh, the driver line here that shows this drill press and a lot of other things. So I'm gonna show you through this catalog a little bit. I think that's uh, a really cool thing to check out. And uh, another thing I wanna show you here uh, before we dive into the drill press is uh, this shoe shine box here, right? You guys remember shining shoes or maybe you still do shine shoes there. But this is a shoe shine box that my grandfather also built there. And uh, right, has always been in the family, like hall closet there for uh, shining shoes and that type of thing. So I'm gonna take a look at the contents there and show you guys that. So, uh, all right, we got some stuff to cover here today and uh, let's get busy. Mmm, now that, that is a good sandwich there. Just grab a little sip of coffee here. Here I got my uh, McGuckin's cup here. I don't know if you guys have ever been to McGuckin's there in Boulder, Colorado, but what an amazing tool store that is. And that's one of the few stores left around this country here that uh, just has some great quality tools and some great customer service there. If you're in uh, Boulder, Colorado there, be sure to check out McGuckin's. All right, here is this old shoe shine box here. And I think this thing just looks amazing. I love uh, the color here and the wear and tear on it. And uh, I just like shoes in general. And uh, over the years, sometimes when I uh, wanna find a nice pair of shoes, I search endlessly till I find kind of the perfect pair. And uh, I've been on some journeys uh, to find a nice pair of shoes there. And uh, I would like to get a custom pair of shoes made someday. Um, I don't know if you guys ever saw this series called Raw Craft with Anthony Bourdain there. And uh, he went down to a store in LA there called Willie's Shoe Service. Now, Willie's not working there anymore. He passed away. But uh, an apprentice who worked under Willie for many, many years took over the shop there. And uh, Anthony Bourdain visited there and uh, Raul there made Anthony Bourdain a pair of shoes. And uh, that series is up on YouTube called Raw Craft. And after seeing that, I went down to LA there while I was in the neighborhood and I visited uh, Raul there at Willie's Shoe Service. And what an amazing guy. He showed me all over his shop there, all the tools and how he's making uh, custom shoes there and just amazing beautiful work there and uh, if you're in that neck of the woods be sure to stop in at willie's shoe service there and uh, pay raul a visit there such a uh, a really nice guy and such a cool shop so let's show uh, the contents of this box here so this box built by my grandfather i'll show you a picture of him here and uh 
right, let's take a look. All right, here is this shoe shine box here of my grandfather's, and uh, I just love the colors on this and the shape of this. And uh, I know my dad said that my grandfather had made this, and uh, this is just classic. Looking here, where you know it looks like it was painted blue at one time, and then it got a coat of green paint there, and uh, right. You can't recreate something like this, and it's got all this history there. You know, sometimes you see, like, uh, that show with uh, Test It there with Adam Savage. He's got a, a great YouTube channel there, and he's making things that are all weathered and doing lots of coats of paint and sanding and trying to make something look old. And then, uh, right, you look on an item like this, and uh, what a, a cool, cool piece. All right, let's look at the contents here. Now, of course, right, all the shoe shine boxes, you got these classic uh, like horsehair brushes here. This is an Esquire uh, brush there. Look at this. This one's all all worn down there. This one here is in a little little better shape there, right? For giving a nice uh, shine to the shoe there. Got the horseshoe. Here's just like some old black polish there. But right, there's all these old cans of... Uh, Right, look at this here, the Esquire boot polish there, right? Here's some Kiwi there, looks like a slightly newer can there, right? Here, it's got the old ShopRite sticker on there, buck 74 there, right? But, I don't know, just cool old stuff, right? Where you would pop open the can there, put a little dab and polish up the shoe there. And, uh, right, used to be uh, Sunday mornings, maybe prior to going to church or something like that, I'd always uh, polish up my shoes on this right here, and uh, pretty cool. Another cool YouTube channel to check out is called Angelo's Shoe Shine, and uh, he's a pretty cool guy there, and uh, he advertises his videos if you can't sleep, you know, watch him shine a pair of shoes there, and uh, that's pretty cool to watch, so check out uh, his YouTube channel there. Angelo Shoeshine. All right, now on to the star of the show here, this Walker Turner drill press. And uh, over the years, I've hunted around for different YouTube videos on this drill press, and there is not a lot out there on this drill press. And uh, that's funny, I thought there would have been uh, loads of videos on this, but uh, here we go, you know? All right, here's this old catalog here, right? Driver engineered power tools, 1937 models here, right? This is all the driver line here. Plainfield, New Jersey there, Walker Turner, uh, pumping out all kinds of tools there out of Plainfield, New Jersey, and some great quality tools here, right? And they have all these different series. They have the 500 series, they have the 700 series, and they have the 900. And the 500 there, right, they're saying is for the home workshop, the 700 series it's more of a you know more of a professional grade there and you could have it in a school shop that type of thing and then the 900 series is for like heavy industrial use there and uh, these are just amazing quality tools there here is the smaller of the drill presses this is the 570 here and uh, this is a little tiny guy there all right and here we are the driver series 700 line and uh, that is the series that i have there that drill press and check out this page right here on the lathe that they're offering this is their 700 and 900 series lathe here and you can get all kinds of uh you know woodworking you can get metalworking attachments here compounds here it almost looks like some armstrong type tool holders there and some backing plates and all kinds of here we got some chucks right over here but i think it's pretty cool here that they're advertising metal spinning as well and you can get a whole kit of metal spinning tools to attach to this lathe here and it says right here metal spinning affords new possibilities for the craftsman spun articles of brass pewter copper or tin have always had intrinsic charm and value the craft of metal spinning, which is centuries old, is used today in making beautiful vases, lamps, cups, pitchers, ashtrays, and receptacles of wide variety. 
right? I think that's great. They're advertising there that, uh, you know, you could make your own ashtrays at home, you know? I don't know. I always think that's fascinating. The uh, metal spinning has always had a, a huge attraction there for me. I think it's just such a, a cool process. All right, here is the page right here, and here is the exact drill press that I have of my grandfather's there. This is the driver 710, D710 there, right? Check this out, selling for $28.25. And then I also looked up, uh, they don't sell this with a motor, you gotta buy it separate, but you can buy a, uh, a driver motor there from Walker Turner there, but they're selling the motor for $12.95. So $28.25 plus $12.95 is $41.20. Now, right, it doesn't seem like a lot of money uh, nowadays, but I put that through an inflation calculator there, and that comes out to $741.32 here for this drill press. So in actuality, you know, that's a pretty spendy little drill press there to buy, you know, 740 bucks there, right? Throw some tax on top of that. That's pretty wild. But right, here's the drill press and uh, they're showing all the uh, attachments and features you can have right here's a, some mortising attachment right here you know it's got the jacobs chuck on there that's great and um it's got this really nice depth stop and it's got a a quill lock on it right there it's got some some really nice features and uh, pretty stout right here they're showing a router attachment here that you can attach to that drill press as well. And you can put some sort of bracket on there. That looks pretty cool. And Walker Turner made so many types of machines here. Here is a nice band saw that you can get there from them. And here's a joiner, right? Lots of woodworking tools that they made there. Here's all kinds of cutters, right? Here's a nice uh, sander that they offered there. I've seen a, a couple of these for sale up on eBay there. Right, and here's their uh, 900 series there. They're saying here for the industrial plant, right? <clears throat> here's the uh, 900 series drill press there. Here is their 16 inch bandsaw, right? Wouldn't that be nice to get your hands on a 16 inch bandsaw like that? And here's some grinders that they're offering there. And uh, here's some uh, Dremel type tools, right? That are running off little motors there, polish. All right, and here's the uh, motors that they offer here. So, right, quarter horsepower is $10.50, one third horsepower, $12.95, dual power here, one third to one half horsepower, $16.95. Now the motor that I have on the drill press is actually an atlas. And it's just a, uh, a real fun catalog to look through, you know, put this by the bed stand there and uh, look through the pages of this and look at all the, the great machinery there that Walker Turner was making there back in the day. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start uh, disassembling this into all different pieces. I wanna get this piece out right here. And my plan is to put this over on the lathe there and polish this up a little bit and get all that rust off of there. So I'm gonna take off all the components here on the drill press and uh, I wanted to show you, I have the pulley is actually out right now, but this right here is where the pulley was and it broke right there. And uh, right, I have the, the pulley taken out. And uh, so the new pulley that I just got in, I'll show it to you here. Here is the new pulley that I just got off of eBay there, right? It looks like original stock there. Maybe it came out of one of these drill presses, right? So this has a top and bottom bearing on there and these, uh, these can slide out, but there's also that splined shaft that rides in the center of this pulley. And that's why uh, this is a special pulley that's unique to this drill press here. And here is the remnants here of the old pulley here that shattered, right? So all these pieces uh, broke off one day while I was using it there. And uh, I had taken out the center here of this spline shaft and I actually took that spline shaft uh, center there and I pushed it into another pulley here 
And uh, although this worked all right, it wasn't quite exact and wasn't what I, what I wanted there. So when I saw this one on eBay, uh, that's the one uh, that I wanted. Here is a closer look at that splined bushing there that's inside there. I don't know if you can see down into the center of that. And uh, that is cast right into the pulley when it's made. And so here's a closer look at this. Now I'd sliced the old pulley in half there to get that piece out and I did push it into that other uh, pulley there. But that's pretty cool how they cast that spline bushing there right into the pulley. All right, I'm gonna start taking this apart here. Here's the spline shaft here where it rides in and out here on the top. And I'll unlock this. Right, there's the handle right there. And I'll drop this quill right out. Now that I got that out, I think I'll, I'll lay this down. Oh yeah, see that? It's probably not been loose in a long, long time there. All right, here's all the parts that I got and it's all disassembled. And what I'm gonna do is just take one part at a time here, clean it all up, and then uh, when I get them all done, I'm gonna put them back together. And the first thing I'm gonna start with here is the pole here. And uh, I'm gonna put this on the lathe here and polish this up. All right, this is Doc Brown coming to you live in front of the LeBlanc lathe here at the Twin Pines Mall. And what we're going to attempt to do here is to polish this drill press post here with either this uh, wire wheel here or a multitude of sandpaper. So uh, let's give this a whirl. <laughs> Right, I'm liking that finish right there. That's starting to look uh, pretty slick there. Almost like kind of the brushed look of the sandpaper there. I don't think I'm gonna go for any uh, too high of a polish on this. All right, I got a bushing in here and this is a bushing that holds a bearing on the top of the drill press there. And over the years, looks like uh, there's been some monkey wrenching going on here to get this piece out. And there's a bunch of little dings and dents. So I'm just gonna take some real light passes and clean this up here. Right, and I think that might be it right there. There's still a couple of dings in there, but everything looks nice and smooth, and I think that's gonna slide right in there. All right, I couldn't help take one more pass and just get those little dings out. Okay, some of these parts here, I'm gonna clean up at the table here with the wire wheel, like this base here. And uh, but I tell you, this is great having this uh, woodworking vise here with the bench dog. And uh, this table, you can't see it, but I got the paper over here, but I have a series of holes 
that you can put this bench dog in. And uh, boy, it is great just for uh, clamping down parts here and uh, being able to work on, on stuff like this. Just clamp this up. And uh, I'm always clamping stuff up over here. All right, now some of these areas that I'm gonna clean up, I don't wanna be too aggressive, and I really like using these types of wheels here. Now these are kind of like a nylon wheel here made by, uh, I think it's Dico, D-I-C-O there, and they make uh, different like grits of this stuff, you know, soft and medium and hard and that type of thing. But it's good if you wanna come in and you don't wanna strip off all the paint. You know, I wanna kinda of leave some of the character of this but just get off the dirt. And uh, these little wheels right here really do a great job. Some uh, telltale signs of probably the original paint color, this uh, kind of battleship gray going on here. All right, Marvin K. Mooney, the time has come. And uh, yeah, the time has come here for this 1937 Walker Turner to be put back together. So uh, I got all the parts cleaned up and we're ready to roll here. So I'm gonna start assembling these pieces and uh, get this rolling. Everything's getting a nice coating here of uh, whey oil over these surfaces. And uh, the spindles, I'll be putting some spindle oil in there that I use for my bridge port. I think it's a, uh, a 10 weight oil there.
All right, and now right up in here, I'm gonna drop this new pulley in that I got here, and I just put some, uh, some nice spindle oil here on these bearings, and here's a little bushing that drops in here first, just like that, and then we can drop this pulley in just like that. This is, this is awesome. What a, what a cool moment here, right? And then we can, uh, drop this other bushing right down here. And I'll just give this a little tap with the hammer. All right, that is awesome. Oh, I forgot to put the belt on. <laughs> okay. Now, all right, I'm gonna thread this belt right into there just like that and drop this right down in there again all right now i'm gonna install this quill here but before i do i'm gonna put a little bearing grease what well, i got some high temp bearing grease just to give this a little coating here before this slides up in there light coat all the way around. Likewise, I'll give a little coat right here on this spline shaft. All right, now I'm gonna slide this right up in here. Go right through that pulley there and line up with that spline shaft there. All right, now I'm gonna put this tension spring back on here. And this is always sometimes a little bit of a tricky mess to get this to click on there just right. This is like uh, you're working with those, with the old lawn mowers there. All right, that actually looks like we're getting a nice coil there. And you can just rotate this and there's different notches for this to fit into. And then that comes right through there. And then this whoop, gets a little washer and this bolt. Right, and then uh, could see, see how we do there if we have enough tension. And it seems like it could use another turn there. All right, that's looking better, nice. All right, we are getting closer and closer to this thing being able to turn on here. This is pretty cool. All right, now I'm just gonna tension this out a little bit. All right, put a little tension on this belt right here and tighten this guy up. All right, and I think that's it. Let's, uh, let's plug this thing in and turn it on. All right, right on, right on. Uh, the time has come here, and all I gotta do here is plug this in and uh, see if the walker turner is back in action. All right. Great, Scott. All right, look at that. Nice. Working like a champ. All right, the 1937 driver line Walker Turner from Plainfield, New Jersey here is back in action. Right on. 
All right, right on, right on. Uh, what an awesome day to have this drill press back in action here, all lubed up, all put back together. New pulley on there, right? The old 1937 uh, Frank Crane there, my grandfather. Uh, the drill press is back in action again. All right, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, uh, you know, a little shoe shine there. Go check out those uh, YouTube sites there and uh, Willie's Shoe Service down there in Los Angeles. Stop in and uh, talk to Raul there and uh, get some shoes. And on the way out here, I'm going to show you some pictures of a table that I built a few years back. And uh, it's just an amazing looking table. It's a slab, live edge table uh, with a nice kind of trestle base to it. And uh, one of my next projects is I'm gonna build a few similar tables just like it, but with a steel base in the same configuration there. And uh, I'm gonna be selling a few of those tables there. Uh, so check out these pictures of this table. I hope you guys are doing great and I'll see y'all soon. All right, happy Tallaham Tuesday.